Good morning. I'm Laura Nedgecash with the Watertown Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm the event and marketing coordinator. Um, welcome to our chamber chat series. And this, this uh, week's chamber chat series is going to be Creative Community Living Services, also known as CCLS here in Watertown. I'm here this morning with Kathy Beaumont, the executive assistant, and Kathleen Roach, the president and CEO of Creative Community Living Services. Welcome, ladies. Thanks. And Kathleen, let's hear a little bit more about the history and, and a, just a little bit more about your company. Good morning, Laura, and thank you so much for inviting yeah. us. So Creative Community Living Services, also known as CCLS, was created back in 1973. So we are in our 50th year. And back in 1973, there were four gentlemen that were working for Bethesda and serving people with developmental disabilities. At the time, the majority of people with uh, ID and DD were living in institutions. And these four gentlemen felt that there was a better way for people with developmental disabilities to live their life and have a higher quality of life. So they decided to go out on their own and, and create their own organization, um, which at the time was called Creative Christian Living Services. And it was a for-profit, and they began serving people and actually allowing them to live in smaller group homes. And uh, over the years, uh, CCLS grew to an organization of about 1,000 employees and served over a thousand people around the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Today, um, we, we've, we've become a little bit smaller um, for various reasons, which we can talk about in, in a little bit. Um, and we've become a, a nonprofit, but we continue to provide those high quality services. Sure. And I'll let Kathy add, add to sure. the history. Sure. Um, so one of the philosophies of CCLS is to serve people with honor and respect um, and, and dignity is a big part of, of what we do and part of the, the dream of our founders was to provide those core, those key values to them and going along with what Kathleen was saying uh, in the smaller based community settings that allowed for integration into the community and it allowed, um, in their view and our view, uh, an opportunity for growth and to specialize in some of those individuals' services uh, rather than trying to cover a broader base. Sure. So that was something that was really important with the, the beginning of our organization and continues today uh, to evolve as um, as the world evolves and talk more about abilities than disabilities. Mm -hmm. And while we can celebrate and advocate for uh, things that may present additional challenges, it also provides that opportunity to live kind of the best life possible. Sure. So. And we're in nine counties. So we're up as far as Black River Falls and La Crosse, and then we come down through Stevens Point and Madison and Janesville. Um, we're in Waukesha, Milwaukee, and I've probably missed a few places in between. Thank you. I was going to ask that. And I know in the last year you guys have moved locations. Mm -hmm. You're still downtown Watertown. We are. Um, I can't help but notice a bigger, brighter space, uh, maybe more staff possibly or more offices. Tell us a little bit about your positions there and who, not who works there, but what you're about, you know, what the day to day is like in your office there. Sure, sure. So we started in the Watertown area mm -hmm. and uh, we maintained a presence in the Watertown area. Um, as, as we said, we are in and throughout the state, uh, but uh, having this kind of this base in the local area was very important to our organization. Uh, um, so the building that we were in was aging <laughs> and uh, while it's beautiful, it, as you know, presents some challenges. Sure. So we had more space than really what we needed for our team uh, in our former building, and we were at several different levels mm -hmm. of that building. 
So when this space became available and we kind of were in a position of, do we do more remodeling and repair the old building? Or do we move into something that's a little bit newer? Uh, we saw this as an opportunity to get all of our team on one level sure. and kind of open it up and uh, allow for more collaboration. Sure. So the team size is about the same. Okay. Uh, we did pull some people that were working remotely into the office and uh, they are in the office a few days a week, which is great, which actually on Wednesdays, um, uh, everyone is in the office, okay. so it's allowed us to do more team building type sure. activities. Sure. And the office is really um, the administrative staff. So mm -hmm. um, our direct care workers and people who are working directly with uh, people with DD are actually out and about in the different sure. locations. And so it's the administrative staff that's located at, at the downtown location in Watertown. That makes sense. So what challenges providers like CCLS are facing today? What kind of challenges are you facing with staffing and funding? I understand that's a huge issue. Mm, it, it is a huge issue. Um, as Kathy mentioned, we really believe in following our core values and providing high quality services. And I think most people have heard on the news and it's not just in the state of Wisconsin, that there is a, a real issue around staffing and hiring people that provide the actual services to people with DD. And so that's a struggle that we've had. Um, we, it, it's just challenging finding people who today want to do that type mm -hmm. of work. Um, salaries are always an issue. Um, it's hard work. You yes. really, really have to be committed and dedicated. Um, and so staffing is definitely an issue. Um, and, and we're doing everything we can mm -hmm. to, to overcome that obstacle. And the other thing is the majority of our funding comes through the state of Wisconsin and then goes through what's called managed care organizations. Okay. And they have certain formulas that they need to use in order to pay providers like us. And unfortunately for us, and again, we're not alone, the rates that they provide for individuals are on a daily rate, just do not cover all the services that are needed. So at the end of the day, it's difficult to provide those quality services and to meet the budget that we've set for the year. Absolutely. And so there's been um, ongoing conversations. As Kathy mentioned earlier, there's a lot of people out there advocating for people with developmental disabilities, um, but we need even more of that. We need the state of Wisconsin to hear that this is a real issue. Um, you know, the worry is if, if we can't provide those services to people in their homes um, and others that they're living with, what does that mean for them? There are more and more providers like us that are having to close their doors because financially they just can't survive and yet the, the need remains. Sure. So um, that's, that's our, a huge challenge for us mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're in it for the long run. We've been doing it 50 years and we hope mm -hmm. to do it 50 more years. Um, but at the end of the day, we're really going to need partnerships to help us get through these challenges. Sure. At the end of the segment, I will post the link to their website for more information, how you can get involved. And at the Chamber Office, we also help promote uh, job opportunities. So be sure to check out our page as well. We have a job opportunities section where you'll find more information on how, if you're interested in getting into that field, um, what that looks like. So uh, you have a big anniversary coming up soon, 50 years. Tell us more about what you're doing for that and what we can expect to see advertised here locally. Let you go. <laughs> All right, well, our 50th anniversary is um, uh, going to be held on October 11th. Uh, we have partnered with the library and we are going to be having our fundraising event at the library. Oh, yeah. 
we it'll be a breakfast um, we've got some raffle baskets and we've got a keynote speaker with Senator John Jagler uh, as well as one of our founding members will be there um, to talk a little bit about the history and and the philosophy behind uh, CCLS and and why we started and why we continue today Great. Um, we're excited to also say that we have right now 18 sponsors for the event. Wonderful. So many of them are local sponsors, so we greatly appreciate that. Um, many of our other sponsors are vendors that we work with. And um, we're excited, as Kathy said, it is a fundraiser. So we, we're going to have a number of different raffle baskets okay. um, with all sorts of fun things. And um, we the, the idea is to share who we are mm -hmm. and have this fun event and it take place within an hour because we know people have a very busy day and um, we're going to have some of our uh, clients that we serve and work with um, come and be greeters and get to know some of the folks and we're looking forward to Senator Jagler talking about his own personal story sure. and his role as a senator um, and what that means to the developmental disability That's community. Great. Yeah. So again, don't miss it, October 11th. Get that on your calendar, and the chamber will also be cross-promoting that event for them. So watch for inf for more information coming soon. Appreciate you guys meeting with me today. Excellent. This is Laura from the Watertown Chamber. Be a member. Be engaged. Be noticed. <music>